but we had this guy, the one that you made me think about it now is uh, this guy, Paul, um, who has been there for probably eight or nine years, which is the bulk of the time that I've been there and was a very active member in the recreation community, I suppose, because not everybody participates in that right. sort of stuff. Um, and he used to be a trucker. He had, um, he had two kids. They both lived in different parts of the country, like uh, I think Austin and Montana. Um, and he started out as, um, he has a rascal scooter. He used to have a rascal scooter. Oh, really? And he wore a captain's hat, like a nautical, like the, oh the, the millionaire from Gilligan's Island. Like, yeah. like he had one of those hats. Slash the captain. Slash the captain, Slash yeah. the skipper. And uh, he used to go out on like long rides on Pulaski Road, which is this major thoroughfare that, you know, abuts the uh, nursing home. And like... You would just sometimes you just see him like in the middle of the road like what are you doing you shouldn't be doing this at all <laughs> like you were going to get killed you were going to get killed but it was like within his right to do that right. um he was also bipolar so he uh like one day he would be cursing you because you weren't like getting him his coffee fast enough and then the next day he would call you his best friend so he as a consequence what he made a lot like of to deal with that well as a con process. well I mean, I think it shaped me significantly in who I am as a person yeah. um, because I know like when you spend like every day like bowing to somebody that's like complete, not a, like an invalid, uh, men mentally unstable, like completely, really like there's no reason that I shouldn't be like the subject uh, in this situation, you know, like the one that like has power over him. But my job is to do everything he says. Right. basically and like you can you can chastise him if he's hurting somebody else but like you can't really like if he wants you to do something for him you, you do it you know so I think it has molded me in a way that there's a certain type type of humility that's either been engendered in me or like you know like or uh, I don't know something is like turned off in my brain about that sort of thing so I can do anything for anybody basically but he um, as I was saying he made a lot of enemies there as a consequence because he'd do things like he'd get presents for Christmas and just throw them in the garbage or something like we would like we would give out presents to everybody and he would take it and they'd be like socks they're like modest presents you know and he'd just like he'd look at us and be like Pfft. and like yeah and and other stuff like he had a cane sometimes he'd hit people that he didn't like with it you know like I mean he was definitely violent and he would um, run into people with a scooter and stuff like that and so as a consequence he, he got he got progressively worse and worse he had a leg that was um it had to be amputated two diabetes. years ago yeah diabetes and at first it started with the toes and he refused to have the toes cut and like two or three toes and whatever and then um apparently it like he, they were like you have to get a cut and he's like no 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 then they finally convinced him that he like to get him to the hospital and when he got to the hospital he refused he refused, he refused to, to have his, his leg, leg amputated. amputated and the doctors were like and the nurses were all like you're gonna die do you understand yeah. like this is not this, this is, is not like an optional thing. Like, right. this is going to kill you. And he's like, I don't, you know, I don't care. So shortly thereafter, he was in, like, he was in hospice treatments, which is, like, special types of drugs and comfort care, 24-hour aid, things like that. And he got progressively more confused. And whereas before, after, like, the first five years, he was, like, sharp. The last two, he was confused. Now he was, like, kind of completely gone. And um, apparently, from what I understand, there was even, like, a case of maggots that had happened on his leg because a fly had gotten so in his dressing. So he never amputated his leg? No, he died last week. Oh my God. This guy died. And so I guess where I'm going with this for me, like the complication arises in that my boss who didn't like him and said, you know, for years, you know, when he goes, I'm not going to, you know, this is one person I'm not going to care about. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't mm -hmm. fault her in one respect but at the same time like he died and like that was it it was just mentioned he died and that was it usually when there's somebody that was like a long time person we like kind of talk about him and whatnot but at this time it just almost went completely unnoticed or unmentioned it was almost like he left the facility versus dying yeah yep and um you know that's just that's just the way it is it's really being there has really radically altered my idea of what death is Riley you see so much death but so how does it alter it it makes it uh, it makes it a natural part of life. It sometimes it's okay to laugh at death. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's like that they died. Like 
they'll be like we do stat books and uh, they they like sometimes we'll like put them in for an activity the day after they died like somebody like just thought they were there but they weren't there and they're like no no they were discharged to heaven like they're they're gone like you can't <laughs> they're not here anymore you can't do that you got to remake the sheet heaven discharge discharge yeah dc to heaven uh <laughs> dc to heaven. dc to heaven yeah so and then other times it's you know it's appropriate to mourn and like go to you know i've only been to maybe like three wakes out of over i'm sure I've probably known 2,000 people to die at this point. Yeah, because you're working there. For 11 years now. You've been working there 11 years? Between volunteering and working. Oh my God. So anyway, that's what that's like. 